Good morning, Good everyone. Morning. Welcome. Um, we'll begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, thankful for love, thankful for being with us throughout the night. We pray now that you've been with us as we discuss more of desire of ages. We pray for the presence of thy Holy Spirit, that you all may be blessed and brought closer to you, and that we glean what we can out of these paragraphs. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shall we begin with hymn number 545, Like a Shepherd Leaders? It has three verses. We'll take the first. Anyone for the second? Five four five. It's a bit new to me. I think you know it. I think you know. Saviour like a shepherd lead us. Do you know it? <laughs> Sounds familiar. Uh, not familiar. too sure, but I'll try verse two, yeah? Okay. Thank you. Anyone for verse three? Saviour like a shepherd lead us. Uh, is it him three four five you said? Four five four no five four five. Five four five. Five four five, thank you. I will try uh, no, the third you. one, sisters. Thank you. Saviour like a shepherd lead us much we need our tender care. In thy pleasant pasture feed us, for our use of foes we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thy one God thou art found. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou art bought us, thy we are. Rest too. We are thine that dost befriend us, be the garden of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Hear or hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear or hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and part to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, we will all return to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, we will all return to thee. Thank you for the singing. We'll just um, share the screen. And then Linda will do a recap. Yeah, I mean, so we, um, uh, we discussed that. Blessed are they that recognise their spiritual poverty and feel the need of redemption. You know, something they are, ri are rich and in need of nothing. The gospel is for the poor in spirit. The spirit dwelleth 
with those that feel their need of a saviour. It's a hum you must be humble and contrite heart. And and it talks about how different the reception you get in Africa than in than in England, you know. You used to go around the 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 um the, where they lived and that and we'd all sit on the benches outside and then you know, discuss the word of God. But sometimes here you get the door slammed in your face or chased down the path <laughs> or something. Uh, it's an honest so ignorant to those who don't want to know. And we need the righteousness of Christ. Man must yield himself to the control of God. The proud heart um the, the proud heart it, uh, strives and where am I? <laughs> and the proud heart strives to esteem uh, to uh, to exempt such salvation but both are, li are little to heaven and the fitness for it's one found in the righteousness of Christ Then there was a, a passage read, uh, read uh, from messages to young people, uh, paragraph um, thirty-five point two. That was very, uh, read very good in information there. Oh, and 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 then we we um, we talked about how how to react when someone does something bad to us, you know. Um, Christ turned the other cheek. You know, we've got to be like that, you know. The question was asked, um, the difference between the meaning of crying and mourning. And the answer came, um, crying is momentary, momentarily, but mourning can last for months, sometimes years. So that's where we got to. Thank you for the recap. Any more thoughts about what we, we discussed yesterday before we move on? I think this is where we finished. 300.4. Come back. Oh, yes, there's a hand. Sister Hope, thank you. Uh, good morning, sisters, and good morning, all. Uh, I was just looking at that paragraph. I'm sure that's the last paragraph we read. I can't quite remember. Um, but uh, the one... Um, where are we? Um, perhaps we read it up uh, before, but it's the one that uh, begins with, Blessed are, the, are they that mourn. But the end, um, I think uh, uh, Elder touched on it uh, at some point, whereby um, when we are sorry for our sins, it said somewhere there that, uh, if I may read it, it's a short one. It says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. But by these words, Christ does not teach that mourning in itself has has power to remove the guilt of sin. He gives no sanction to pretend to uh, to pretense or to voluntary uh, humility. The mourning of which he speaks does not consist or, or does not consist in melancholy and lamentation. While we sorrow, this is what I wanted to bring back. While we sorrow on account of sin, we are to rejoice in the precious privilege of being children of God. Uh, yes, we, we talked about soaring for our sins, but uh, uh, crying and mourning for, um, for our wrongs. And yet, when we cry and sigh, we still go back. But here, it's uh, um, uh, uh, um, 
uh, a, a help for us that indeed, like David, when you look at so many of the Psalms, how he was crying to the Lord, it was, it brings all, it brings tearfulness because we had God, as we said, we, we take him and then we, when we do wrong again, we are crucifying him. And I thank God for giving us uh, that faith because he says we grow from faith to faith. We grow from character to character. We grow from grace to grace. And in our soreness for sin, indeed, that God may take, may help us to detest sin, but not to remain there mournful, but to know that it is only him who can take us from one ladder to another. I mean, what a precious God we serve when we truly, sincerely, uh, as he said, when we come with a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart, he will not despise us. He will not put us aside as long as. I, I remember I remember when we are in, I was in a transition of food. And I'm sure, uh, because God says in everything, uh, eat or drink and whatever we do, give, we should give him glory. But I was in that transition whereby I was living this it was disturbing me the my the health message you know it was disturbing me but god never left me where it continued to disturb me but i committed it to him so it's giving us a, a privilege to see how wonderful god is that while we sorrow on account of our sin and so much that we do we should rejoice in the precious privilege of being children of God. Because what the enemy wants us to mourn and not to be maybe to think we have not been given and then we become the children of the devil. No, God wants us that even when we mourn sorrowfully for our sins, we remain and to be indeed accepted that God is a God who forgives our sins and heals our diseases. Amen. 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 Thank you for those thoughts. Yes, it's very true. Any more thoughts before we continue? It says this sorrow herald heralds a joy which will be a living fountain in the soul. Let's continue. <coughs> and for those who also mourn in trial and sorrow, there is comfort. The bitterness of grief and humiliation is better than the indulgence of sin. Through, the afflic through affliction, God reveals to us the plague spots in our character that by his grace we may overcome our faults. Unknown chapters in regard to ourselves are open to us and the test comes whether we will accept the reproof and counsel of God when brought into trial. We are not to fret. Uh, when brought into trial we are not to fret and complain. We should not rebel or worry ourselves out of the hand of Christ. We are to humble the soul before God. The way of the Lord, are, way of the Lord, are obscure to Him, who desires to see things in a light pleasing to Himself. They appear dark and joyless to our human nature, but God's ways are the ways of mercy, and the end is salvation. Elijah knew not what he was doing when, in the desert, he said that he had enough of life and prayed that he might die. The Lord in his mercy did not take him at his word. There was yet a great work for Elijah to do, and when his work was done, he was not to perish in discouragement and solitude in the wilderness. Not for him the descent of the, into the dust of death, but the ascent into glory with the convoy of celestial chariots to the throne on high. Amen. What, what, where are we? 
Yeah, I think it's a it's a big paragraph that, so I think we'll look at that one. See if I can't find it. <laughs> Um, what paragraph the, is it? The paragraph is 301.1. It says, For those who also mourn in trial and sorrow, there is comfort. The bitterness of grief and humiliation is better than the indulgence of sin. Anybody got any thoughts on this paragraph? He's talking about um, Elijah, wasn't it? When he was, um, he thought, he thought, he, he'd, he'd run away and he wanted to die. You know, he'd done some great work and he wanted to die, but God hadn't, hadn't uh, he'd got better things planned for him. Someone else wanted to die as well. Um, Jonah. Yeah, he wanted to die. You know, he thought he'd done, he'd done, Everything and, and things didn't turn out for Joanna. Things didn't turn out the way he thought they should turn out. So, and he felt I think he wanted to see the destruction because the w people were so wicked, and he felt that he'd be like a false prophet if because God if nothing happened. Them. If nothing happened, yeah. Mm. There was still a great work for Elijah to do. And when his work was done, he was not not to perish in discouragement and solitude in the wilderness. Not for him a descent into the dust of death, but ascent into glory. Yes, he was translated. And he's still alive today in heaven, seeing yeah. all these things that are happening. Thank you. Sister Metron, thank you. Yes, good morning, uh, everyone. You know, it gives me courage here to 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 know about um, this really the situation that Elijah found himself in, and he was kind of like now regretting uh, about his life, looking at the situation that he was in, and I'm reading from. Um, that those lines which uh, uh, says he um, uh, do you mind just bringing it a bit down because I want to join it with the statement that says they appear dark things and so forth and so forth yeah um, oh I'm lost <laughs> they appear dark things that's the one that I wanted to join with where am I now Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, just somewhere there. Yes. Thank you. Uh. -uh. Yeah. Just. Uh. I'm reading from where it's saying we are to humble. Okay. When when brought into trial, we are not to fret. That's where I want. Yes, definitely. When brought into tr into trial. Yes. Thank you. When brought into trial. We are not to fret and complain. We should not rebel or worry ourselves out of the hand of Christ. We are to humble the soul before, uh, I think something is just in my way there. Yeah, we, yes, yes. We are to humble the soul before God the ways of the Lord are obscure to him who desires to see things in a light pleasing to himself. And then now it says, they appear dark and joyless to our human nature. You see, it's, it's, it's mainly in our tendency to sort of like uh, feel very much despondent and uh, feel so much defeated when we are faced with the challenges in our lives i don't know about you but i have experienced uh challenges in my life that i felt so very much defeated and i felt like god is somehow away far away from me but it did not be in his word that encourages us or that encouraged me 
it is easy to turn your back away from God. And the enemy comes so pressing, so hard on you to make you feel that God is not sympathizing with your situation. God is not there. And the enemy takes advantage of that. The enemy almost took advantage of me that I thought, well, God knows my situation and he's not there, he's not appearing, he's not talking, he's not doing nothing. I had such moments in my life, just as Elijah also came to the point, oh, Jonah came to the point of saying, what's the point of living? I would better die and then end everything. Isn't it that we see, we hear many people, they enter into depression and they think taking your life away is the best way of dealing with the situation. Oh, how many people have we read in the newspapers or heard in the televisions that they have committed suicide because they couldn't handle it. The, the enemy is, is so good at that. When you are in your down moments, he comes and presses and bids uh, you to follow him and to follow his direction because his mission is to destroy. But it did not been the word of God that stood by me. Indeed, I would have turned my way in my back against God. But uh, God is always with us as here. It's, it's saying that uh, uh, we should not rebel or worry ourselves out of the hand of Christ. Indeed, for sure. Today, I can testify that uh, in the moments when it seems like God is actually not there, that's when he's very much, very close, very much present. And he's so, so close that you never think he will be that much close. I can testify this to everyone this morning that uh, no matter what situation you find yourself in, it's those moments, just that period when you think, I think God is far away from the reaching at this moment. That's when he's so very close, actually, with all the answers that you'll be you know, looking at. No, may God help us. It's, it's, it's very much encouraging to know that even the giants of faith, like Elijah, <laughs> when, I, when I look at myself, I'm not me, I never can match the, the faith of Elijah, but even the giants of them all, like Elijah, could feel so down, so despondent. The giants of them all, like Jeremiah, could feel so down and say, Lord, what's the point? What's the point? We all are faced with that moment, but surely God is just there. God never left Elijah. He never left Jeremiah, never left Jonah. He will always, always come closer to us all the time when we are there. Isn't it? Our Bible tells us that he is so close to the brokenhearted. God is so close to the brokenhearted. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. We all get down moments and it's that's when Satan hits you over the head and tell, tries to tell you things are not worth going on. Why don't you end it? And so many people listen to that voice. It's sad. That's yeah. what Satan is out to kill and destroy. Yeah, that's, um, you know, it's sad. I mean, there was even hope for Judas, but he, he just listened to the Satan's voice and finished it all. You know, I know he did a terrible thing, but um, there's hope for each one of us, and if it depends what voice you're listening to, whether um, you know you, you take your life or whether you continue. And it says right that the poem about the footsteps. You know, it's when there's only one set of footsteps. It's that's when God is carrying you. So thank you for those thoughts, Sister Metro. Anybody got else? Anybody got any thoughts? Anybody any down moments like Elijah did? I think he was running from De Jezebel. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she was a... Uh, but... God, I had well, plans Jezebel, for him. Jezebel was dealt with, wasn't she? Mm, she was. Mm. Any more thoughts, anyone? <coughs> God sees a bigger picture. We don't. We only see our little part. Our little mm. part when we're in, when we're in in um, uh, 
having problems. We only see the little bit, but God sees a bigger picture. And it, there's always a way out. You know, we're told that trials will not come on us more than we can bear. That's a promise that God's given us. So we, we have to trust in God that there is a way out for us. Sister Sylvia, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, as we as we read this paragraph, um, I was just reading in the morning Psalms, uh, Psalm seventy seven, and you can see from the story here that we are reading the discouragement um, Elijah and all all of us go through at times when we are faced with trials uh, or when things don't seem to work out right or when some bit of <clears throat> affliction comes our way. But when you read Psalms um, 77, um, the whole the whole part of, the whole chapter is really beautiful. Um, and the psalmist here was was questioning. Um, I have considered the days of old and the years uh, and, and the ancient and the years of the ancient times. A call to remembrance, my soul in the night. I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast Will the Lord cast off forever? Will He be Will He be favorable no more? Is His mercy clean gone forever? Doeth His promise fail forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has He, in anger, shut up His tender mercies? But then there's encouragement. When we when we have the word of the Lord in our hearts, the psalmist says, and I say this is my infirmity, but I'll remember the years of the right hand of the most high. I'll remember the works of the Lord. Surely I'll remember the wonders of old. I will meditate also on all thy work and talk of thy doings. So you see, when we're going through the trial, and at the end of it says, um, the the voice of thunder was in in the heaven, and the lightning and lightnings lighted the world, and the earth trembled and shook. Thy way is in the sea, and thy path in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Thou leadest thy people like a flock, and the and the hand of Moses by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So when we read this and we read this paragraph, surely we should remain steadfast and hold on to the faith because we you see the psalmist here was go to a point where they, they were wondering whether god's grace is there anymore whether his mercies are still with with him and 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 that's what we get sometimes when we get the affliction and such whatever we go through we wonder is god really there does he hear my prayers? Why is this happening? But we have to remember that the, I think it's the book, uh, Christ Cares, I think. It says that the afflictions that we go through uh, refine us. And uh, when we go through them and we, we are victorious and continue to hold on to the faith, we come out even even farmer than we were before the, the the trial, the temptation or the temptation we were going through. So we need to hold on to the faith and and claim the promises of God and remember that whatever it is that is coming our way, the devil is always looking to 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 make us either doubt or to make us lose the faith. And where he will not, uh, where he will not be successful in making us sin, the the trial that is cast on us is is to make us doubt whether the God we we really believe in is there. And so when things happen the way they happen, we start to doubt. And and maybe like Sister Metron said, had it not been for the word that held her fast, she would have probably turned. But we have to remember. 
that God's promises are sure. Sometimes it might not be the prayer or answer we want, but we have to remember that if he led the children of Israel, it says that even the waters trembled at his sound, even the depth of the seas, we have to claim the same promises. It's not a different God we serve, but have the faith of a mustard seed, whatever the trial is, and surely he will bring you out. Um, he will bring us out at the end. All we have to do is stay steadfast in prayer and trust with all our hearts. And like Sister Metron said, we will surely see that we were worrying for nothing, that, that all this worry causes us so much fear for nothing. But just claim the promises and look at how he has led the children of Israel. That is our example, actually, that the miracles and everything he did for the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan, that is the God we serve. And so we shouldn't be shaken or be moved. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those thoughts. It's very true. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. As the song says, some through the valley, some through the flood. Um, uh, it's a lovely song. I can't, I don't know the other words. But, um, you know, that it, 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 people go through things, but we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Otherwise, we lose out. We lose it. And that is, it's um, is our anchor. So will your anchor hold in the storms of life? All these songs that are written are written for our encouragement. You know, and the, the writers went through some terrible things, you know, some of the hymns that the, they were written, they were written in uh, adverse circumstances, really bad circumstances. Uh, yes, thank you for those thoughts. Uh, there's um, a little paragraph just to finish this section. Would somebody like to read the next paragraph? Then that finishes this section. Um, God's word for sorrow. First word for the sorrowing is, the I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrows. Isaiah 57 verse 18 and Jeremiah 31 verse 18. Thank you for the reading. Yeah, so just a couple more, uh, few more thoughts on this one. God's word for the sorrow is, I have seen thy way, seen his ways, and will heal him. It, there's always hope with God, you know, it brings hope through. We've all been through trying circumstances, some worse than others. Some just never seem to be able, be able to get their head above water. But, um, you know, God is with us. Um, and he says, I will turn you their morning into joy. And will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrows. Any thoughts on this? Is that a new hand, Sister Metron? Oh no, sorry. I think I forgot to take it down. I don't know whether my hand is being seen. Oh, yes, yeah, back there. It's yes. Is that a new hand? Yes, it's it's a new it's a new hand and old hand together. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying I mean to all the comments which you know which I was listening to um from sisters um before me. And um you know, not to preempt the, the book itself. But I think, you know, when we, when we go forward and we look at the cross, that explains everything when we are going through, a, when we are going through trials. Um, because Christ, he was um, the case of the sins, of our sins was put upon him. And he, for the first time, because of us, he was separated from his father. And the father could not look at him. Even the son could not shine. The angels 
could not even, you know, there was darkness. If you read that chapter in Desire of Ages, but this is when Christ says, oh my God, why have, why have you forsaken me? You can see the magnitude of, um, you know, this, everything just, I cannot describe it. And, and Jesus is crying out. But what did he do? He depended on the love of, of, of his father. He knew the character of God. That God is, is merciful. He will keep his word. He knew um, the promises of God. He knew who his father was. The faithfulness of, of his father. And he he carried on. It is the same with us. I think there's, I can't remember whether it's test in testimonies, uh, volume one way. He says we can never be, uh, go through beyond, or no human being will go beyond what Christ went through for us. Therefore, whenever we go through trials and temptations, we have a high priest who, his experience, even to a, to a greater extent than us. Therefore, when we go through, we should not, yeah, we, we, we can get to that point, but let us look up to Christ and say, Lord, I'm in that situation because he understands. That's why he went through for all, through these things. I am in that situation where I feel I don't see your hand, but I know, I know and I trust and I believe that right now you are with me. And I know you are going to send an encouragement. That's when you are going through those dark moments. It's the time to proclaim, to say, I know. With your mouth loudly to say, I know, Lord, you are and the enemy will depart. Therefore, it is good to go through those moments because it is testing our faith in him. Thank you. Thank you, sisters. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Even um, Job said when he was going through his dark days he has yes. certainly had some dark days um, yes. I know that my redeemer liveth and you know um, he knew that he'd be all right in the end he says yet yeah, in my flesh will I see God all these are for encouragement for us you know it's God's not left us in sometimes you feel as though you're in a pit <laughs> with serpents and you try to get out and yeah. it's, it's difficult but, but everything we go through it's got to pass pass through cross first yeah, you know, we've probably we, we have that promise. Nothing will be brought on us that we cannot. There isn't a way out. You know, there's a way out. Always a way out for us. And uh, you know, we've got to trust in the promises of God. The song we're just going to sing the chorus of it because it, it goes so well with this. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire. But all through the blood, some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night seasons and all of the day long. These songs are, are written to encourage us. Yes, yeah, some through great sorrows, but God gives a song. Amen. Amen. Beautiful words. Let's let's continue. I don't see any more hands. Um, can somebody read the next two paragraphs for us, please? We're going on the next section now. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. The difficulties we have to encounter may be very much lessened by the meekness which hides itself in Christ. If we possess the humility of our master, we shall rise above the slights um, 
the rebuffs and the annoyances to which we are daily exposed, and they will cease to cast a gloom over the spirit. The highest evidence of nobility in a Christian is self-control. He who under abuse or cruelty fails to maintain a calm and trustful spirit robs God of his right to reveal in him his own perfection of character. Loneliness of heart is the strength that gives victory to the followers of Christ. It is the token of their connection with the courts above. And the next one? Yes, please. Though the Lord be high, he yet has yet has he respect unto the lowly. Psalms 138 and verses 6. Those who reveal the meek and, and the lowly spirit of Christ are tenderly regarded by God. They may be looked upon with scorn by the world, but they are to they are of great value to in his sight. Not only the wise, the great, the beneficent will gain a passport to the heavenly courts. Not only the busy worker, full of zeal and restless activity, nor the poor in spirit who crave the presence of an, an abiding Christ. The humble in heart, whose highest ambition is to, is to God, is God's will. These will gain an abundant entrance. They will be among the number who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, are they before the therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Revelation 7 10. Thank you for the reading. Um, there's a lot in that. Uh, something put came out, stood out to me when you read it. Let me have a look. Um, he who under abuse or cruelty fails to maintain a calm and trustful spirit robs God of his right to reveal in him his own perfection. <coughs> character. It, again, it's down to attitude, what, what our attitude is when we're going through things. A meekness is sometimes look at, looked on as weakness. It said Moses was the meekest man in all the earth. I remember reading that. Um, it said if we possess hum humility of our master, we shall rise above the slights and rebuffs and annoyances to which we are daily exposed, and there will cease to be cast a gloom over the spirit. It says, uh, great peace of they. I think it's who loved our Lord. Nothing shall offend them. It's when we get offended, that's when we um, we have to do, you know, take these rebuffs without getting offended. Look look and realise it's Satan that's doing it, not the person. Well, the person is doing it, but Satan is using them to do it, you know. Because, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a difficult situation. You know, you get rebuffed, you get all these annoyances. You get, um, you get th people thinking the wrong things about you. You know, I'm sure we've all been through this. You know, they've got... Um, they just, you know, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, there's a lot in these two paragraphs. Uh, Sister Martha, I can see your hand up. Thank you. Yes, good morning. morning. Um, I actually struggle, and I don't know if any of you share this struggle that I have. I mean, getting a balance between, maybe I don't understand what meekness is, Meekness and being a, what do you call it? A, a, what do they call it? A floor rag, something that people can just step on. Dormat. Dormat, yes, dormat. That's, that's, that's really my struggle. I don't know if anyone can kind of uh, expound on really meekness and not being a dormat at the same time. Thanks.
as a question for everyone. You can't. That's why you you can't look look looks on like weakness, isn't it? And uh, you get your doormat for somebody because you're meek. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm just looking at the um, uh, meekness in the in the dictionary, but I'm not getting much. Um, it said the fact of condition of being meek, submissive, sub emissiveness. You submit to people. And all his best friends make fun of him because of his meekness. I mean, not to let people trample all over us, though. Mm. Um, not being a doormat. Yeah. Then another, another, uh, another um, says, um, quality of being quiet and gentle, unwilling to argue or express your opinions under this culture, ordinary people are. It's well, got dot 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 then. Well, so then well, the rest of it. <laughs> well, when Christ was um, uh, in the trial, you know, um, he didn't say a word. He opened not his mouth. He opened yeah. not his mouth. Mm. And they were getting agitated because he didn't, he wouldn't open his mouth. You know. Um, sometimes silence is the best answer. Yeah. Sometimes is. silence is golden. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Because you know, people try to twist words, but if you say nothing, they can't twist words that you haven't said. Yeah, we had a situation re recently, didn't we? And um, we never said a word. We just listened to what the person had to say, and then another person who was involved in it said, um, "You did the right thing because they can't twist your words." Yeah, uh, Sister Sylvia, I can see a hand up. Hello. Um, I was just trying to understand the sister's situation. Um. A, a little bit better to to maybe advise, but um, it I guess it depends on on what you you would classify as being meek, but also like she said, being used as a doormat. I guess it's 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 best explained in in what she's she's going through. Um, but we we know what we've just read here. They, they, there's there's a a godly way to to challenge. Uh, I guess when you feel you're being used as a doormat, um, most especially like she's saying, maybe she's being used for everything, and 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 she's I I don't know what the situation is. But um, I guess there's a there's a humble way of asking for help and support from others, uh, rather than being being drowned drowned with what you're you're being asked to do. Yeah. Um, my comment was really on just one simple line here that that said so much. Um, it says. I've lost it. I've lost it now. Um, it says, "Blessed are the meek, uh, who the difficulties we, we encounter may be very much lessened by the meekness which hides itself in Christ. If we possess the humility of our Master, we shall rise above the slights and the rebuffs, the annoyances to which we are daily exposed." And they will cease to cast a gloom over the spirit. It says, it says the highest evidence. The highest evidence of nobility in a Christian is self-control. I think that's the one I wanted. Self-control. He who under abuse or cruelty fails to maintain the calm and trustful spirit robs God. Of the of his right to reveal in him his own perfection of character. That's the one I wanted. Christian self control. Um, I guess we 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 are all sometimes overtaken by by what has been said about us, and and our reaction straight away will will give others reason to judge us 
the minute we react in a way that that doesn't reflect Christ, e even though you might want to react, but maybe react at a later point, having humbled yourself at that point and taken the 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 blow and held it and probably prayed about it and later on make maybe make your decision either whichever way you want to to go is 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 very important how we react to some things that are said or done about us is very important because they will either reflect that Christ is working in you or they will reflect that self is still prevalent. Especially an example is if you're very hot tempered and nothing bad can be said about you and our reaction is, is not good whenever somebody says something or we are quick to, to say a word or two, we have to be quite careful because this is what others will now use against us. You see, she actually says she's a godly person. See what she said or see what she did or see how she reacted. So self-control is such a small, small, seems like small words, but what you say and how you react, like the sister said earlier, is going to to say a whole lot about you. You might have reacted in a way that is, is not, um, it, it, you might have said, I'm not going to do that. But then what comes out of that and what so many people are going to say about just that one thing you have done is so, so, is so, so damaging. So it is important, brothers and sisters, that we need, we need to take time to pray about things and and ask God's guidance. Even under under the bus, like under the we said earlier, under our trials, let us not be quick to say, "Oh, God is not is not hearing me." Let us just be quiet in His presence and ask God, "What shall I do in this situation? Please give me guidance. Help me to respond to this in a way that will glorify You." And indeed, when we do that, in fact, whoever has come to you with the blow will even be taken back thinking, I thought she was going to do this and this, or I thought with this, she would have A, B, C, D. But the self-control should reflect that the Christ in you, the Christ that has changed you from what you were before and what you are now, it should be evident to everybody else. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for those words. That's right, what you just said. It should yeah. be evident to everybody else. If you do slip up, people have long memories. They do. They have long they're memories. They're always ready to throw it at you. Yeah, we should respond in a way to, that glorifies God with self-control. Mm. Mm. Thinking, this too shall pass. Mm. There was a there was a king years ago, years and years ago, he had, he had it on him. He had a little... Um, a ring. A, was it a ring? Yeah, yeah a ring. he used to undo it, yeah. And there's a little like a lid on it, and he'd, and it, when he was going through trials, he, he used to read that, this, this too shall pass. Nothing goes on forever in this life. Thank you for those thoughts. Uh, Sister uh, Kezia next, and then Brother JB. Then I think that would be for this morning. Thank you. Yeah, I... I, I put up my hand uh, maybe just to um, try and go to the question which Sister Martha raised, which is very deep, uh, that question, whether you can say you, you, are, be, you are being a doormat or, or the, there is meekness, you know, what is the difference there? Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to answer it in, in, in a different way in the sense that when the Bible says, um, if somebody asks you to go with him for a mile, you take, uh, go take two miles. If somebody gives uh, hits you on the cheek, 
give him the other cheek. What does it mean? Um, that means it depends on us, how we are viewing the situation. The world may view it as a dormant, but you as a Christian, the, the inscription upon you is the ins inscription of, of a bullock. Is it the altar or the sacrifice? So it's how you are going to look at it yourself. Are you dead to Christ to be able to do what the Bible is saying here? Offer the other cheek. Uh, go for the extra mile. Uh, nothing is going to offend you. Somebody says anything. All those counsels. Not keeping a record of wrong. Love in your heart. Are you going to view that as being a dormant or you are going to, to view that as Christ's character? The world might, might call you names or whatever names, but you are dead to Christ and it's Christ who is doing those things through you. Therefore, I don't, I don't think there would be a word which would be called a dormant. You would consider yourself a dormant at any point in time. But the world might look at it in, in a different way. But you yourself, you don't look at it in that way at all. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Um... The world may say us as doormats to, to wipe the dirty feet on, but we're not asked to go through any more than what Jesus went through. And if he's gone through much more than what we will have to, ever have to go through. He was certainly treated as a doormat. You know, just spit upon all kinds of things and, you know, really bad. Thank you for those thoughts. Uh, Brother JB. Um, I think I I agree with uh, Sister Kezia. Um, because when Christ was on earth, he was not here to please anybody. In other words, it didn't matter what people thought of him. So in a way, we are not here to please anybody either. It doesn't really matter what people think of us because people will think whatever they want to think. It it doesn't matter, but the solution is having Christ in us. Once we have Christ in us and somebody steps on our shoe, it's no longer JP that is, that is uh, reacting. Because I may think of reacting and giving them a slap. But if Christ is in me, it's then Christ will say to me what to do. So Christ will be the one who is reacting, not me. So if Christ is in me, that means I'll have the wisdom of Christ because he says, once we fear the Lord, we have, I mean, that's the beginning of wisdom. So we need to have wisdom. Christ has wisdom, wisdom, had wisdom when he was on earth and he was led by the Holy Spirit. So in every situation, it wasn't like somebody has done something and then there he has to start thinking, what am I going to do? No. He knew what to do. He knew when to talk. He knew when to hold his peace. He knew when to when to walk away, regardless of whatever people thought. Because he wasn't here to please anybody. He was here to do the will of the Father. So if Christ is in us, we will do things that people will not like. It doesn't matter as long as Christ is in us and leading us. Because we can never be liked by anybody on earth. Some will like us, some will comment that, some will comment this, some will comment whatever they comment. That is how some people are. But at the end of the day, our aim is to have Christ living in us and allow him to
to live in us. And we, once we have the fear of the Lord, then whatever happens, we react with wisdom because we will know what to say at whatever particular time, what to do. So Christ knew what to say. He knew what to do. Then they spit on him, and yet he never said a word. So he had wisdom because he knew what to do and what to say. So it's important that we need to be led by the Holy Spirit and have Christ in us. And I think that is the remedy for dealing with any situation on earth. But once we are led by Christ, we will not please anybody. There will always be people who look at us or say things about us as if he is strange, she is strange, oh, they are too much, this, that. People always talk, and now I've learned to just ignore people and let them talk because people will always talk anyway. But what we have to aim for is to please Christ, not to please human beings, because you can never please a human being. It's impossible. Thank you. Yes, that's very true. If we have Christ in us, we'll stay cool, calm and collective when we're under mm. fire. Yeah, and self It's the Holy Spirit will, will keep us, you know, keep the reins on us, that we, we'll react how Jesus would react. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the answer. And yeah, I was just thinking, it's, Christ wasn't a people pleaser. He told them they were white sepulchres. You know, told them true, home truths about themselves and they didn't like it. And uh, yeah, we've got to have self-control when we get in, mm. when, when our backs are against the wall. So thank you for those thoughts. Well, it's just about finished time. It's just gone. We've gone over time. Yeah, it's like gone over time. <laughs> but it's been well worth it. Yes. Thank you for all the comments and all the thoughts. Um, happy preparation day, everyone. Uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Um, Sister Sylvia, would you like to close in prayer for us, please? Mm. Maybe she's not able to. Sister Martha, are you able to close in prayer for us, please? Yes, sure. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for the study of your word and for the testimony of Jesus that we have been going through. Help us, Father, to really understand what it means to be meek. Help us, Father, to be led by your, your Holy Spirit. We want to be so Holy Spirit led that uh, uh, when we are faced with difficulties, we'll hear a word in our ears, as Isaiah tells us, uh, telling us where to turn, whether to the left or to the right. And as and when we are Spirit led, we'll be able to face all. Uh, uh, all, all challenges with face, with humility and meekness. Now, Lord, as we separate one from each other, we pray that you'll be with us as we uh, prepare for the Holy Sabbath hours. We pray that by the set of sun, holy angels will find uh, uh, a place to visit in our homes, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Brother yeah. Sister Martha. Thank you again, everyone that's joined. Um, at 12 o'clock, it will be midday prayer. Then 6.30, song service. And then followed by a timely message from Elder Renshaw Caesar. This will be the last one in the series, but I'm sure we're going to have another one. It's been a blessing. Um... Are there any more um, announcements, Brother Desire? Uh, not today, thank you, sisters. Have a wonderful profession, everybody. Yeah, Sabbath blessings when it comes.
and see you all later by God's grace. Blessed day. Bye.